Welcome to Swiss Art Biz, a video podcast on the business of art with a Swiss twist. I'm Tani König and today I'm joined by Andy Hermann, better known for his blog and Instagram account, Andy Meets Warhol, which has over 60,000 Instagram followers and which was named best account for contemporary art by the German magazine Monopol. And besides spreading his love um, for the arts online, Andy works as host at McDonald's in Zurich and is an artist himself. So there's plenty to talk about with him. Um, Andy, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, uh, Tanya, for having me. So good that you're here. Uh, I'm, Thank you. I'm very excited. Um, so let's go straight into it. Sure. You studied at the London School of Economics mm -hmm. and Political right. Science. Um, you worked at Tinder at the Swiss Post yes. uh, before you started your blog. So mm -hmm. it wasn't really immediately clear that you do something with arts, was it? Um, well, I mean, I always have had a keen interest in museums, galleries and art uh, since I was a little kid. And uh, it's not the only thing I'm interested in. I'm also interested in international relations, uh, international affairs, activism, uh, which LSE kind of stands for, um, but also new ideas which change uh, human behavior, um, like Tinder, which was um, a groundbreaking idea for, for meeting people. Um, and also um, ideas of sustainability, of uh, environmental um, uh, caring and, and uh, s sustainability in regards to new ways of transportation. That's where the Swiss uh, Post comes in, where I was engaged in a robotics project. All these are quite topics which are influencing contemporary art practice. And that's why I think there is a link um, to all of, uh, of um, art praxis. Mm -hmm. Well, it's also the link that you created because there are people that are maybe in one field, but they don't mm -hmm. do the link. Could be, yeah, <laughs> could be. Um, but then, unplanned, but it, unplanned. <laughs> it's somehow, okay. So you also come from an entrepreneurial family mm -hmm. uh, that has a big interest in art. Um, you told me right. that your uh, one of your grandmothers painted mm -hmm. the other one um collected art and was very engaged in supporting how did that influence you it uh, greatly influenced me because um if you if i mean as a, as a little kid i remember walking into my uh, grandmother's atelier so she was a former businesswoman who wanted to spend the rest of her life uh painting, creating art, and she, so, she solely did it for, for her personal um, joy and not for fame or money. And I think uh, this was something great to experience. I remember the, the, the paint and the, turpent the smell of paint and turpentine in her atelier. And so my other grandmother actually was uh, the mat from the maternal side. She was also engaged in art, so she was a, a, a big culture supporter who took me and my brother to a lot of these international art institutions like Prado, um, like, uh, the, um, uh, like uh, the Vatican Museum or like the uh, National uh, Museum of Modern Art in Scotland. So all these uh, definitely shaped me as a teenager. Mm -hmm. So you and got to travel a lot. Absolutely. I'm very grateful for that, mm -hmm. that she took us, uh, she took me and my brother to these uh, trips. Wow, that's amazing. Um, then your brother actually also made it to the art field. Yes. Yeah, so he uh, he's co-founder at a startup called Glass, mm -hmm. uh, which is based in London. And they have like a technology of uh, um, identifying information about uh, paintings and, and their valuation. Mm, exactly. So, so we can see that how you know, having a family that supports that can actually really lead to yeah. the... Yeah, <laughs> um, that could be, um, but I think it's also the personal interest maybe as well and uh, and how much you en engage yourself. But uh, I'm grateful that that um, there there was an influence there, absolutely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and my, my dad also, um, he started painting like five years ago. So uh, recently, uh, yeah, pretty recently. Mm -hmm. um, although, I mean, he's he's a, a managing director and CEO at a logistic business mm -hmm. or a family business. So, I guess there is a there is a contact to the arts kind of there. Yeah. Then in 2016, you started uh, your blog, Andy mm -hmm. Meets Warhol. Yeah. Um, what triggered you for that? I mean, you kind of. I mean, wherever I'm here in Switzerland, I told that I'm going to meet you. People know you. 
know you for the blog. What triggered you to start to start it? Um, so actually, it's a very funny story. I was with two of my uh, London uh, high, uh, university friends. We were on a road trip on the Greek island of Lefkada, a beautiful island in, in uh, the Greek Ionian Sea. And uh, actually, um, I was throwing around with names like Andy meets Tanya or Andy meets uh, Andy meets uh, like Coca-Cola yeah. bottle. And there was this kind of Andy meets Warhol, which made a click. And mm -hmm. I think... Um, uh, what the what the driver there was, uh, it was to share um, my visits to museums and to galleries and also encounters with with uh, artists in Switzerland in a more approachable and humorous way um, and to also educate um, people who uh, and, and viewers who have not, not so much uh, a family contact or, or an influence with the arts. And also do that in a humorous and, and funny way, and that was actually uh, the the aim of, of of starting the platform. So you mentioned you want to educate people mm -hmm. with the platform, right? Yeah. So it's also kind of democratizing or yeah, making the access a bit easier to the art mm -hmm. world because sometimes it's not so easy. What is the vision behind it? Um, vision is a very ambitious and powerful world, and uh, in this fast-changing world, um, world, um, I would say that um, to continue trying to educate people, share these museum visits, but also maybe share funny moments out of being a, a full-time host at McDonald's. So basically, what what I'm doing now. Um, yeah, that, that's basically the, 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 if you would say, vision. Mm -hmm. and, and what drives you? Is there something that drives you to do it? Um, it brings me joy to, to see people who have not this uh, natural um, uh, incline towards the arts to still uh, be engaged whether the, these are uh, um, posts or about text-based art or street art or even funny art memes with uh, with McDonald's. Uh, I love that. We're going to talk Thank about you. that. <laughs> We're going <laughs> to talk you. about your art memes. Thank you uh, so much. <laughs> in a moment. Um, but let's stay with uh, within your platform because mm -hmm. um, I also wonder how can you finance such a thing? Uh, I, I understand it's a non-profit mm -hmm. platform. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but you also have partnerships with the Masi in Lugano, the mm -hmm. museum, and with La Prairie. Mm -hmm. So tell us, what does this involve? What does this partnership yeah. mean? So basically, um, as you mentioned before, it's, uh, I mean, the, the goal has never been to monetize uh, the platform. Um, it's a non-for-profit platform. And uh, the goal is to um, educate uh, uh, the readers and also the, the followers. Um, so um, these partnerships are basically involving a number of things, uh, promoting um, or informing my followers uh, or, or readers about a certain exhibition. Um, and also uh, to interview the artists who are um, part of this exhibition. Uh, about what uh, drove them to exhibit these works, what is the thinking behind showing these artworks. And now, because you also mentioned La Prairie, yes, I'm very, I'm very grateful for um, uh, having them um, as, as a long-term sponsor, um, because uh, with uh, their sp sponsorship, they enable me to cover costs of going to very important events like Art Basel, like the Verbia Art Summit, um, just to name a few, and uh, the brand is also sponsored to maybe you know uh, ETH and Ecal on several um, of their research projects. It's funny because it's a La Prairie uh, cosmetic line. Abs yeah, uh, and uh, but they're very engaged in in in, uh, in the, arts. Uh, the arts and especially um, on uh, on a different also research initiatives. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also with the Fondation Bayer yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, I actually saw that post as well. Yeah, with Mondrian, yeah. the research project. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How come? Um, well, I think uh, there there is a there is a really good fit because um, uh, La Prairie has been a, a, a big partner for Art Basel for many years, and a lot of uh, it has a lot of artistic. Um, collaborations so there's a lot of artists who are being commissioned to create artworks for the brand for Lapri. um plus uh 
all these bottles, the whole bottle design, the whole um, uh, the whole experience, product experience is very is that kind of very creative, very artistic, and I think there is kind of a link uh, to um, to the arts. And with the Fondation Bayer, so it's yeah, so there's also a research component behind it, mm -hmm. which enables this team of the of the of the Mon Mondrian Preservation uh, Project to uh, finish finish this off um, this kind of research project. Okay, very nice. Um, so and um and also apart from that, um, obviously, so uh, these institutions or museums they approach me, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm also um. Uh, very grateful that I'm invited by my friends at communications agency Neutral, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. are uh, organizing a lot of um, these uh, artistic collaborations as well. So, for example, with IVV, where I traveled to Berlin last year, mm -hmm. and uh, I would really like to give some uh, credit or shout out to them as well, and especially Michel Nicole. So y you said it's nonprofit and they cover mm -hmm. costs. So whenever you travel to, let's say, Art Basel, it, usually you can at least cover the costs mm -hmm. by yes, your sponsors. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then at the same time, you mentioned, or we mentioned before, that you are also working as a host mm -hmm. at McDonald's Absolutely. full time. So I, first of all, I also wonder how do you manage <laughs> to do it all? <laughs> Um, but let's first talk about what exactly mm -hmm. are you doing at McDonald's? I mean, what the, what what is that? Uh, being a host, and um, yeah, you need to explain that. Yeah. Um, so a host is actually a person who greets uh, the guests. And before I start, I'd like to mention: so it's the McDonald's uh, in Zurich at Bahnhofplatz. Mm -hmm. And so what the host does, and it's also called guest experience leader, you greet the guests, you ensure that they have a smooth uh, um, ordering experience, and then also to uh, have a good service uh, experience. And, uh, and this is actually uh, part of my job. I'm also responsible at the moment for uh, different promotions. So we have a lot of great marketing campaigns going on. Um, for example, now with like spicy nuggets, uh, there's a campaign. Okay. And last but not least, uh, uh, the role also entails promo and sales analysis, mm -hmm. where, where I'm responsible for, and also um, a lot of uh, client feedback, so guest mm -hmm. feedback, if uh, also to improve uh, the, the overall experience in the subsidiary. Okay. Because nowadays, uh, everything is about selling experiences as well, Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Especially when thinking about the digital world, yeah. uh, what people want is to experience something. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, I wonder, did you apply for the job or they, did they approach you because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe they wanted you as an ambassador because of your following, because your yeah. connection to Andy Warhol? I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's a very good question. Um, Actually, no. Uh, so it was actually, I was doing a further education course at EB Zurich mm -hmm. and I wanted to have a part-time job where I can earn some money on the side. So I was always fascinated by the McDonald's brand since, since a child, but uh, this was not the motivation behind it. It was purely to work part-time and to earn uh, some money on the side. And, um, and, uh, I had never the plan to stay and even develop into a certified host, um, but it kind of evolved and it kind of evolved and uh, the link actually uh, was created unplanned, I'd say, uh -huh. really unplanned. Okay, because... Um, and now I also take part, yeah, like in, in brand ambassador campaigns um, with... Uh, uh, for example, employer recru employee recruitment campaigns as well mm -hmm. with also Swiss comedian Gabi Rano. We've done some oh. some work. Yeah. So, but it was it was not uh, there was no link or, or plan. So it was a coincidence. The, it was a coincidence. It was okay. definitely a coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because on your Instagram feed, you of course you post a lot of absolutely. Uh, I mean, you, you one see the uh, one can see the McDonald's um, logo a lot, but also in uh, in connection to art. Uh, or you post uh, yeah. recently for Valentine's Day all the hearts. Yeah, or... we had. Uh, I was in charge actually of the whole like. Um, decoration and the whole store experience and it's something i loved i think it's very uh, with the hearts and, and with everything it's very artistic in a way and and i really enjoyed setting it all up and yes 
um, sharing um, and, and being inspired by, by my, by my uh, position there as a host at Bahnhof, uh, McDonald's Bahnhofplatz, it's definitely having an impact on, on, on the videos uh, created. And sometimes these ideas also, they're, they're developed collectively or maybe also um, with inspiration of the rest of the team. And I definitely would like to credit also my coach and mentor Valkyria, who is all, um, part of the, of the franchise and, and, and manager uh, Lucia Meyer, be because um, they also have some interesting ideas of how to develop uh, uh, these into some funny videos. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely the, the everyday uh, experience which you get also from, from our guests. And or for example, there's a funny uh, story with with Corona. So you have the hand disinfection um, stand, and I what I say is, okay, please, this is from Chanel, Chanel number five. <laughs> and and people, um, so it's a creative way of making people to disinfect their hands, uh -huh. which they normally maybe because they touch the the or ordering screens. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, a lot of it it evolves, I mm -hmm. think, and I really enjoy. Uh, enjoy the enjoy this quite a lot it's amazing you're kind of a, the art you're like an artist at mcdonald's bun of Plots where you can uh i would say the restaurant is like your canvas and you play around um for everyone who that hasn't seen it you need to go and check out the instagram account and it meets warhol and then you know what we're talking about if you haven't done it yet um so you mentioned you started working there as a part-time job, but still yeah. it, it, it became a full-time job. So why did you choose to stay on and do it? Uh, is it because, you know, Andy Warhol's love for pop culture <laughs> and things such as a fast food chain? Um, that's, that's a good question. Um, actually, no. I mean, first of all, it pays the bills. Um, the second aspect is I love... I love people. I love people from all walks of life. And so I get to serve actually people from so many different social, economic and cultural backgrounds, but also get to work with uh, many diverse people in my, in my daily routine. The third reason is uh, I really love the brand. It is very, it is, it is very creative, uh, a lot of uh, witty and humorous marketing campaigns and promotions. And I'd say the, the last factor is I, I greatly enjoy on a daily basis being a host, but also um, I'm very good at it. So I, I really, I, from, from the um, guest feedback received over the uh, last couple of years, uh, it's, uh, it's something I can do very well. And I, it's something if you can do well, um, you should definitely try to evolve this. So... That's why it kind of developed into that. I admire it because, you know, on one hand, you're uh, in the art world that is also sometimes seen as, you know, a bit um, elitistic. Or, mm -hmm. um, and then you're working at McDonald's, which, you know, it can also seem like <laughs> the complete opposite. <laughs> but you're so good in uh, connecting both things together. If you say so. <laughs> <laughs> but... You know, I actually. I think I think about uh, th that's about art that um, you should uh, you should find links where pe other people don't don't see it and find connections um, where people think it's it's impossible. And I think that's maybe the beauty about about um, about art and and ev about even physical artworks um, that that could be possible. I, I, but I, this is, yeah, if, if you say so. <laughs> no, I love it. And, you know, I can ha kind of connect uh, with it because I, but I, used, we, yeah. I used to work as a flight attendant. Ah, nice. Yeah, for Swiss. So nice. And I loved it. And I loved it so much that I did it after my A-levels before I went to university full time yeah. a year. And then afterwards, I kept on doing it freelance. And I just, nice. I unfortunately, I missed, I, I, yeah, I... I I had like a contract where I left and I yeah. could have gone back, but this was until last year and yeah, I kind yeah, of missed yeah. the deadline. And I'm oh. still so, I really enjoyed yeah. also, as you say, I loved serving. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it sounds yeah, yeah. to some, but I thought it was such a nice act of also entertaining people. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, usually it is, it is a it, component on that. Yeah, You get instant feedback. Yeah. 
and yeah, actually, I, my next question you already um, answered kind of because it was like, how do you connect mm -hmm. art with um, McDonald's? Um, yeah. I don't know if you have anything else to add, uh, how you connect both or, or if everything was yeah. already said. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I find the, the whole packaging, the whole, the whole, um, the, the whole product, it's, I think in a way it is very creative and, and very arty. It's an iconic American, uh, chain, uh, uh, fast food chain. And, uh, yeah, I think a lot of artists have engaged with this topic. Uh, I, I interviewed, uh, last summer, um, um, Tom Zachs, who did a lot of, um, he, he, McDonald's was uh, a topic in a lot of his works, where he did a show at uh, um, in Sindelfingen, um, or a Swiss artists as well, Karl May, Nick Hess, um, there's also Yanni Lyonen, who have, uh, who have used the topic of McDonald's. Um, and so there is a connection to the arts, absolutely, and um, and also, as you mentioned, to Andy Warhol, um, which actually I found out much later. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Andy Warhol loving everything that is yeah, exactly. culture and uh, fast food is yeah. probably one big thing. By the way, we mentioned McDonald's a few times, but this uh, episode is not sponsored by McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a coincidence we're talking uh, about it um, because, of course, you have a yeah. connection. Uh, then... I mentioned also that you uh, are an artist yourself. Of course, now we already yeah. seen being an artist within uh, your job, but you also paint. Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, I also draw and uh, I also uh, create a bit of art collages and and uh, oil uh, mm -hmm. painting. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, yeah, it's and, something I do. And is this something that you do on the side or is it something that you have a business strategy behind uh, that you're trying to sell it or? No, I, I never thought about this. So, uh, I, no, actually, no, I, I do it because I, I really enjoy it. And uh, I think you you shouldn't really I mean, with art, you you definitely shouldn't have a, a, a business strategy. You should firstly do it because you enjoy it. And, uh, and yeah, I, I love what I do. I really enjoy drawing and, and there's a lot of inspiration coming from a lot of different areas, also from being a host as well. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then, um, so, I mean, you don't, you're not thinking about a business strategy. Uh, do you even think, I don't know if you even think about it, but mm -hmm. do you think that nowadays one needs a gallery mm -hmm. as an artist to represent oneself or do you think like because you have uh, uh, so many followers you could yeah. also maybe just you know like cause like sell it online yeah. uh i i never thought about selling and uh, i never even thought about uh being represented by a gallery i haven't i haven't even thought about it um what i would love to do maybe in the near future to to present my drawings uh, to a little bit wider audience and I would say offline so not really on, on my Instagram to get some feedback that's what I would love to do maybe after corona <laughs> when when events are allowed again yeah so organize like a small exhibition yeah right yeah yeah right that's I wouldn't even call it exhibition maybe a, a small show. yeah exactly <laughs> That's actually interesting that you're mentioning you would like to do it physically just because uh, everything you do or a lot mm. that you do is also on the digital, uh, in the digital sphere. Yeah. Um, but still the art now, especially with Corona, uh, there was kind of a push into digitalization, mm -hmm. but you still think the physical thing uh, is something you need. The physical will never be replaced, uh, of course, uh, and and actually, so this is a this is a very important topic, which now with with uh, the whole pandemic and with Corona, it has so the digital uh, content offering uh, in in the arts it has definitely uh, been uh, uh, developed in in the last month. So there's a lot of great um, content now online to be found. Um, but I definitely think that the physical experience, it, uh, it's equally important. And uh, you, I mean, you definitely have, I think, to view a, a work of art as well. And uh, for example, as a collector, I think you, you have to imagine having, hanging it for, on your wall for several years. Um, so I think 
w once you have it in your physical space uh, a work i think it is important to to maybe um see it in real life as well yeah how, or an installation or yeah. how did the pandemic impacted your work currently mm -hmm. i mean you cannot visit physical yeah. shows so did you have to sh switch or were you also able to mm -hmm. leverage because maybe more people were yeah. online um so i would i mean first of all i would i would uh mention the the positive effects of the pandemic i think first of all the positive effects are that there are a lot of um new content created like great curator uh, online uh tours with a curator through an exhibition for example house constructive or uh, Kunstmuseum Basel, they have done some great uh, um, programs or um, there is uh, Verbia Art Summit and Engadin Art Talks, which this year they took their program online um, so, uh, with, with really great production and, and great videos and content. Um, also, uh, there are online viewing rooms. I haven't really visited any of them yet, um, but um, I would really like to, to check them out. So there is great new content. So obviously now on the down downside, yeah, museums are closed, galleries are closed. Um, it is definitely, um, I would say per se, firstly for um, the galleries, a challenging time, uh, especially the, the, the small and, and, and medium sized and independent galleries, it's, it's definitely a challenging time. Um, and of course for museums that there are less visitor, uh, visitor numbers. Yeah, I mean, I certainly definitely miss uh, visiting museums, but uh, at the moment, yeah, I'm taking uh, uh, leverage of the whole online offering. I'm trying to make use of that also with, uh, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm thinking positively into the near future. So with your blog, with your Instagram, mm -hmm. how, how did that actually happen that it went uh, i mean that you got so many followers i think you really like uh, mm -hmm. like you hit the nerve somehow i mean you're followed by by big uh, mega galleries and was there like a moment where it kind of exploded um yeah I, so basically i think it exploded 2 years ago 2 and a half years ago when um i Firstly, collaborated with uh, with um, with Abraham Kuzilega, so um, the Kunsthaus Zurich, and then also my first visit at at Basel. And I think at that point in time, it was definitely something new to to film and also share the visits of of and also in 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 this funny and humorous way way of going to Art Basel and. Uh, yeah, being at the opening and, and experiencing the whole um, vernissage or preview. Uh, so this was definitely a moment where I definitely saw much, much more engagement. But uh, in recent times, it's uh, it's definitely been the case also with new features of Instagram, right, like um, reels, reels etc. That uh, these uh, McDonald's videos or, or humorous videos, they have really caught up as well in a lot of... Um, views also from non i mean non-traditional art audiences i'd say yeah, yeah yeah no i think i think so too that it it's not only the yeah. art world but plus of course i mean yeah the the feature of of monopole uh, definitely uh helped also i was so i also was featured by von revue i did i did um a feature uh approximately one year ago about um uh which shows to visit but the, uh, yeah before before the corona <laughs> lockdown so yeah all that i'm very grateful that that it um supported the uh, having like a more exposure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's amazing uh, and so i mean that's something that many dream of uh so what advice can you give to someone it doesn't need to be i mean maybe it can be about blogging whatever um to kind of pursue a career mm -hmm. in the art world yeah is there anything uh that you can share to to the next generation <laughs> yeah um yeah tanya this is this is actually a very good question i would say first and foremost uh they uh, be open and be very curious and not be intimidated i mean the, the art world is actually a very very big world i mean there's there's so many uh, stakeholders if if maybe I don't know if it's the correct word but I would really not feel intimidated and I think 
this is uh, maybe an, an, an important advice to, to take and also to try to, to be authentic, mm -hmm. to, to talk to many peop people because uh, like with any other business, but especially in the art world, it's still quite a very people driven business. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think uh, th there's not really a right or wrong I, I mean, I don't know if I would call it career, but there's not really a right or wrong path. And I think that's very beautiful about um, about arts and that you that there's not really a limit and there shouldn't be a limit. I think art should should be free. That's very nice. And you meant, wow, <laughs> <laughs> art should be free, especially you said you shouldn't be intimidated, which I can imagine many people are. Absolutely. Because it's very often it's also not so easy to get absolutely, in. I absolutely. I mean, it is a big world, but at the same time, it's also a small world. Yeah, absolutely, Tanya. And um, I, I totally understand because if you also see these super galleries um, where, where um, you, I mean, pro, before Corona, you had a lot of uh, very um, great openings. And, and obviously, I mean, uh, it, it may be in intimidating for some people, but... I'd say um, there's not really a right or wrong because uh, as understanding or looking at an artwork, it's very subjective and someone can feel or understand something different, completely different than someone else. So I think uh, you shouldn't really, you shouldn't really uh, have this preoccupation that you're not going to understand or, or you're not, you can't express your opinion because I think that's the beauty about art that um, it's very, it's very subjective. And and uh, it allows everyone to be to engage and to and to form uh, an opinion mm -hmm. well, or a feeling yeah. or or yeah or an emotion. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the perfect ending. That was so nice. Um, thank you very much. Thank uh, you, Tanya, as Andy, well for being here. Thank you. It was my pleasure. And um, check out um, Andy meets Warhol on Instagram and on the blog. And uh, all the best with your with your project. Thank you, Tanya. To you as well. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>